we are told then that Jesus said that flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. You could have only known that. What do you mean flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you? I thought this guy's running around saying he's a Messiah. First, I want to uh, acknowledge you. Uh, you, in my humble opinion, are a, a very uh, enlightened, uh, very, very uh, uh, educated scholar, and a true servant of God. You are sure serving your Jewish brothers and sisters in a way that, that, that needs to be done, especially in light of uh, the Jews for uh, Jesus movement and all of that, the hocus pocus that is going on for the last, in the 1970s. And uh, uh, so, um, having said that, I, one other thing, I really watch uh, YouTube uh, just about every night before I go to bed. I watch some of your past uh, talks and lectures. But the question is, what do you think in your opinion was the thing that the Jews, contemporary Jews, rejected Jesus? What, what was this? Because he, l l l l let's make okay. an assumption. He never claimed he was God, okay? He would have been stoned. What sources would I use to know? What would I rely upon? What information would I access, tap into, to be able to, um, to assert what Jesus actually said about himself? What people believed about him? Did he ever claim to be the Messiah? Means you're asking me a question, and you're asking me. I assume, Tatala, sweetheart, stay with me. I assume. First of all, thank you for your thoughtful statements of things that you said. It really touched my heart now and before. But what am I accessing? Like, how would I, beyond speculation, what what would I? So, you, do you understand the problem I have in answering that question? You agree that that's a problem. Like, what? Who's the historical Jesus? Okay. Okay. So I have a, there's a dearth of information. There's no contemporaneous historians. We have nothing. Okay, we have books that are that are just embellishment and fantasy, and each builds upon the other. Matthew and Luke far more embellished than Mark, and Mark has already written 40 years after Jesus is executed. What did you know? What did Christians think in the year 50? In the year 40? Okay. Does that make sense? Well, there are some things we can do to try to tease this out. And that is, we can ask ourselves, are there things in the Christian Bible that seem rather embarrassing and would not have been included, would not have been invented by people who sought to advance the Christian religion? Okay. So I will begin by saying this to you. Jews care about one thing. If Jesus is the Messiah, we want to know about it. And if he's not the Messiah, it doesn't make a difference if he was a Joseph Smith character. It's, just, it's not relevant to us. It's only relevant to us is, was Jesus the Messiah or not? If he is, we should embrace him. If it's not, it's not relevant. And I have a sense, usually, that the people who ask me these questions, not about you, but people often ask me because they're, they were Christians, they had what they thought was a relationship with Jesus, and they kind of liked him a lot, and the folder that he was in was called the Messiah folder. Then they discover he does not belong in the Messiah folder, but they really don't want to put him in the trash bin, the recycling bin, and then empty it. They don't want to reformat the drive. Can I just think that he was a nice rabbi, completely misunderstood? Because I've been talking to him all my life. Was I talking to nobody? So I think I would be evading this if I didn't state that the reason why ex-Christians want to know who then was Jesus is it's not coming from a healthy place. It's coming rather from Rabbi, is there a way I can hang on to the old birthday cards that I got from my ex-boyfriend? That's what's really going on. 
And it, it does not edify God. If any married person in this room, a person who ever hoped to be married, were ever to discover that your spouse kept birthday cards from his ex-girlfriend, you would be very disappointed, okay? That would really hurt you. I don't know if it would be grounds for divorce, possibly not. But it would really break your heart open. And that's what it does to Hashem. When a person seeks to understand an ungodly relationship, rather than just turn to Hashem and throw all your love into God, but rather wonder, you're laying there in bed with your wife and you're thinking in the back of your head, I wonder what my ex-girlfriend's doing right now. You don't want your wife to know that, but God knows your every thought. So I say this to you, that it is not a godly path to ask, well, who then was the real Jesus? Follow? It certainly is an area that's highly speculative. There are some rigorous methods that we can use to try to tease that out, but that in, what's not accessible. But I do say to you that you would not be here, and you drove well over a thousand miles to be here tonight, Okay. And you would not have done that if you did not love Hashem very, very much, right? And if you love Hashem, He doesn't want to know about the other thing. He forgives you, but He wants all of you now. No more of any other relationship, okay? So I will say to you that it's important to really erase it. You should not remember any gods. It should not be on your mouth. I don't even want to hear it on your mouth, the Torah says. It's one of the 613 commandments. Okay. Now that I made that whole speech, in Jewish tradition, Jesus never claimed to be the Messiah, and that claim was made for him. It's so obvious in the Christian Bible, because in the Christian Bible, which is there, all this was written so that you might believe. I didn't make it up, it says it. So the Christian Bible is written to get people to believe in it. Why in the Christian Bible, at the very end of the deal, right before the crucifixion, he turns to people who have been with him for a year, according to John, three years. And he, Jesus turns to them, oh, who do you think I am? And guess what? No one's walking around going, well, you did say that you know, I and the Father are one, and uh, I'm the other. No, they just have no clue. They don't know. He's a liar. Who? They don't know. And then in Matthew's version, Peter, it's not only Matthew, Peter says, you are the Messiah, the Son of God, okay? And we are told, I don't believe that conversation ever happened, but I think it's, it's very useful to know what, that no one thought that he was the Messiah. That was a later idea. Because we are told then that Jesus said that flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. You could have only known that. What do you mean flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you? I thought this guy's running around saying he's a Mashiach, right? So that I think is very, very striking, and it's transparent to me that Jesus never claimed to be the Messiah. And in Jewish tradition about Jesus, none of it is flattering. Okay? There is no part of Chazal, which means Jewish tradition about Jesus, that's positive. It's really quite negative. So this is important that if he claimed to be a messiah and he was a false messiah, the rabbis would not have wanted to hide that. They are not fans of him. But nowhere is he condemned for this. So that points us in a direction. He, he almost never says he's the messiah. There is that one conversation with the Samaritan woman in John 4. It's very, very rare. So I don't think he came up with the idea that he's the messiah. I think that's an idea that people came up with afterwards. Okay? And is it speculation? Yeah. But is it based on a criteria of embarrassment? A very strong, rigorous criteria? I think so. But in truth, I would say to you, to say to Hashem tonight, Lord, before you go to bed, instead of me, instead of my YouTube video, say, Hashem, would you wash me? Would you cleanse me of this completely? Just help me. I need your help, Hashem. Would you help me just wash this out of me, my mind and my heart, so I can worship you alone, so I can devote my life to you alone, so I keep my eyes on you alone, so I can listen to you alone. Please help me wash that past away. I want to be close to you. Would you help me, Lord? Do that. 
Thank you for your question. Adon olach, asher malach, v'terem kol. 